Hi there, it's Kathy Gates and Melissa Hines from the Institute for Pelvic Health. And you're watching Demystifying the Pelvic Floor, weekly videos providing real and simplified pelvic floor education for real clinical situations. We've got you covered. And today we're going to talk about something super exciting, um, poop and what it means for your pelvic floor health. So Kathy, before you learned about pelvic floor, what how did you ask your patients about bowel health or how did you get more information as far as their bowel movements go? Totally. Great question. So I would always ask about how many times a day they pooped and if they strained to poop or if it was loose. And that was pretty much all that I asked. I didn't use the Bristol stool chart. And I would also ask about their, you know, usually people would say like, I like, I would say like, tell me about your poop. And they'd be like, it's normal. And then I realized that was a bad way to ask. So I'd say, how many times a day do you poop? And then I think now it's so hard for me to remember because now I know about the pelvic floor, but I know I certainly never put the two of them together. And I would always ask, oh, so have you tried like if for people that were training or with constipation, I'd always say, what have you tried? Like I would go directly to what have you tried? What makes it better? What makes it worse? And uncover a lot of dietary things and lifestyle things. And then once I learned, or I would say connected the pieces that the pelvic floor muscles support your bowel health, I was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like you said, there, there's so many, your, your bowel movements tell you so much about your overall health, but especially your pelvic health as well. So you can see on the Bristol stool chart, we have this printed out in our clinic and we will show it to patients and say, what do your bowel movements typically look like? <laughs> but then there's no like normal because normal yeah. means something different to every single person. So you normalize it by just saying, here's a picture of all different kinds of poop. Tell me what yours looks like. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's a good icebreaker too. Um, totally. so, <laughs> so you can see here the types one through seven, one would signify severe constipation. You can see the pebble like stool. Um, this can be definitely a form of pelvic floor dysfunction that can cause this because in a previous video, we talked all about the mechanics of pooping and the puborectalis muscle that needs to soften and elongate in order for the rectum to open and for stool to come out. So if that muscle is spasming or you get that paradoxical contraction where someone thinks that they're bulging or relaxing, but they're really contracting, that will cause can cause these kind of pebble-like stools or smaller stools because they kind of relax and then it contracts it kind of relax or it's just so tight that it can never fully relax um you'll also get the mild constipation or those the, the type two where it's lumpy and sausage like um type three and four are normal um now i always ask the question i don't know kathy if you do this too but i always say is your is your stool because they'll point to the four and then I'll say, but is it very thin and ribbon-like? Because yes. you want to differentiate that as well. Because they may say, oh, it looks like this. It's long. Um, but if it's really thin, that also can signify that that puborectalis just can't relax like it should. And it's just not getting that full relaxation. So then the stool is very thin. Totally. Um, also, these type five through seven, where it's a little bit more diarrhea or soft, is also not great for the pelvic floor and can, it creates too much pressure. All of these dysfunctional poops can create too much pressure in the pelvic floor, but especially with um, diarrhea as well, because it's just your, your patient will lose muscle tone at the sphincter if they're constantly having diarrhea because the sphincter needs that dense poop in order to send signals to your brain for that muscle to relax. So when you aren't getting that and it's just super soft and explosive, um, your brain and pelvic floor also become disconnected. 
So, and I find, and I'm sure you do, Melissa, that you just totally normalize the whole thing by showing the chart, by talking about right off the bat, like when you're taking your subjective history, your pelvic floor muscles are responsible for your ability to pass stool. So all of a sudden, there's nothing weird, like there's nothing, you've just completely normalized all of it. And then it's a great teaching opportunity. For sure. And all of this happens before you, you have your patient get up on the table and you do your internal exam. So you're also starting to make your patient feel a lot more comfortable about yeah. having an internal exam. Definitely. Yeah. And that's a wrap. Did you like this video? If so, hit like and subscribe. Please share with your colleagues and let us know your biggest challenges when it comes to evaluating your patient's poop. And subscribe to our email list at instituteforpelvichealth.com to get your free guide, Four Tips for Managing Your Challenging Pelvic Exam. You'll also get access to our free weekly pelvic health content. And be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, where we'll post more pelvic health tips. And we're very excited to announce that our online course will be launching this September. So make sure you're on our email list for the most up-to-date information. Our course will break down the pelvic floor so that you can confidently care for your patients with pelvic floor dysfunction. By simplifying the pelvic floor, giving you practical things that you can do to assess your patient's pelvic floor, to put the pieces together, together to make a personalized education plan for your patient will improve patient outcomes and your provider experience. Thanks for watching and spreading the word. Now let's revolutionize pelvic health. We'll see you soon.